Hello everyone. My name is Amjad Hussain. I am a biomedical scientist. Before even I get started, let's take a pause for a few seconds and think of someone close whom you have lost due to a deadly disease named cancer or someone who has been undergoing the treatment. Look at these numbers. By 2030, the report says that the new patients will be almost 22 millions, adding day by day, year by year. I'm going to talk to you about a technology which helps clinician in terms of making the decision that which drug is going to work before even they start with the treatment. But before I get there, let me talk to you a little bit about cancer and what's the biology behind this deadly and devastating disease. If you look at this picture, the cancer, which is an unwanted, uncontrolled growth of cells, they start at a site, and then once the site starts growing, then the tumor starts spreading to different part of the world, different part of the body, and then this different is due to basically the movement of these cells through the blood vessels, through the lymph vessels, and that process is called metastasis. So basically, a tumor does not cause death at the primary site. It causes basically death when the cells start moving to other parts of the body, like bone, brain, liver, and then starting affecting the functions of those body parts. That's called metastasis. Now we need to understand that in order to grow a beyond minimal size, a cancer need regular blood supply, a regular supply of nutrients. Now the question is that can we cut the blood supply, can we target the blood supply and kill the cancer by starvation? Answer is yes. There have been therapies, there have been drugs which attacks those blood vessels supplying to the tumor or cancer. But if you look at the pictures, you can clearly see that when the tumor or the solid cancer was treated with different drugs, drug one, two, and three, there were effect in second case, in case of drug two, but there was no effect in the first panel, if you could see that. What does that tell us? That basically one drug fits all approach doesn't always work. And when you go to the clinic, there are standard of care drugs, oncologist, they always treat you with standard of care drugs. And in two to three months time, when a patient is undergoing treatment, we realize that drugs are not working. And by the time we know that, the tumor has already spreaded to the different parts of the body. Means metastasis has happened and there is no control. The question is, what can we do about it? Why these drugs don't respond at some point of time? Because the tumor that we are targeting, the drugs are targeting, it is heterogeneous. It has a mixture of cells. They express mixture of molecules. And perhaps these drugs do not capture those molecules. So treating a heterogeneous mass of the cell with one drug is not a good strategy. Now imagine when you get a blood infection, when you get an infection and you go to the doctor, doctor takes blood sample and then they do the antibiotic sensitivity test before even they get started with the antibiotic course. And then in a while they come up with a profile deciding that okay which antibiotic is going to be effective for you. But when you go to a doctor and you have a cancer or your loved one have a cancer and then there is no technology available which basically tells you upfront that okay, this is the drug which is going to work on this particular cancer 
and this is the drug which is not going to work. Wouldn't that be fascinating having such a technology upfront that you can basically grow your cancer cells, add drug one, two, three, four, five, or a combination and come up with a decision that, okay, which drug is going to be very effective, which is going to be most efficacious. But why it didn't get developed so far? The reason is because cancer cells, they change their properties when they get out of the tumor, when they get out of the body. So growing them artificially in petri dishes and the testing is a very difficult task. So I've started working on that technology when I was still doing my fellowship at Harvard Medical School. And that was the time when I started and we lost someone who was very important, Steve Jobs in 2011 due to pancreatic cancer. So I went to my professor who's supposed to be a leader in the field and I told him that I'm going to work on this technology, I'm going to develop something which will tell us upfront that which drug is going to be effective. We had a discussion with a team of oncologists. They said, no, you can't do it because when you are growing cells in petri dishes, it is impossible. So I have developed certain biomaterials. We have fixed their properties in a way so that it mimics, it matches with the real tumor environment. We grew up the cells, we tried with drugs, and we got some results. I again met with that team of oncologists. I said, look, I got some results, we can do that. And they said, okay, it is interesting. And now when we do retrospective studies and see that our in vitro data matches with the real clinical outcomes, they called me and they said, okay, can we do a small trial? So I think that is one of the very exciting moments for me that when the technology is basically getting kind of accepted, we are not there yet, but at least we got some meaningful results. So I'm very hopeful. So the idea is that you grow the cells in that micro environment which matches with real tumor environment and then you put the drug and see whether cell death is happening, whether tumor cells get killed, and that's good if they get killed. So this is one idea that I've worked upon. So if we have right drug on time, perhaps we could save cancer growth on time and there will be less chances of metastasis. As I mentioned, that people don't die due to primary tumor, they die due to metastasis. My another idea was that most of the time when we target a cancer, the cancer growth is happening majorly due to changes in DNA. DNA, we all know, is the genetic material present inside the nucleus in a cell. And when there is any change that is called mutation, that can also lead to abnormal cell division, which leads to cancer. So far, whenever we target a mutation, it is a single mutation. But the point is that cancer is so heterogeneous, there might be multiple mutations. You don't have to understand this slide, but I just would like to mention that there are multiple molecules which can get mutated or can get activated or inhibited and then overall, play an important role for cancer growth. So targeting one mutation is not, again, a good idea. So this is the time when we need to move to next generation sequencing. We can have the DNA sequence data. We can get all meaningful genes sequenced and have the information of entire mutations named mutanome. So we have the genomic information. We have the mutation, the changes information and then accordingly we can code them using the software that okay if this is these are the mutation these drugs are working if these are the mutation this combination is working and using artificial intelligence we are working now on a software where we can have the mutation data from the patient 
and then can code them in form of software using artificial intelligence. So whenever you visit a doctor, they will see your mutation profiles, a panel of genes, and then enter that in computer, and then software will tell you as a clinician that okay, which drug is going to work and which is not going to working. So this can be combined to the first idea, they can test it upfront and then yes, if the result matches, then of course there's a win-win situation both for clinician as well as patient. So that is going to be the key that you can save time as well as money because cancer treatment you all know is not cheap and of course lives are not. So finally, I would want you to leave with this thought that cancer is not only the abnormal growth of the cell. Yes, of course it is, but it is caused by multiple mutations. It is a genetic disease and we need to have those tests upfront. We need to have those tests which can sort of tell us that which drug is going to be most efficacious, that can save a lot of time, money, and of course, lives. Thank you very much.